So today I'm here to talk about the books that I'm going to be reading over the winter months. Here it's going to be dark and cold and storming from November to January and so it always means great reading time, lots of indoor time. And because of it I find that I'm often in the mood for dark books, dense books, epic books which will definitely be reflected here. I'm going to have timestamps as I break out the various genres that I read and if all that sounds good let's get started. First let's talk about dark fiction which I'm going to use for an umbrella term to cover not only horror and thriller but other books that involve dark material that don't necessarily fall into any of those two genres. But again, I want to be more inclusive of what counts as dark books because I am finding my taste growing and changing and I want to be reading books that I love, books that I really recommend to you all. The first book I want to check out is Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman. This is one that I don't hear a lot about online, but the people who have read it absolutely love it. It is historical horror with dark fantasy elements, I believe. It's set during the time of the Black Plague. We follow a dishonored knight who comes across this orphan girl and the story goes on from there. Again, I don't know much about it, which is going to be the case. I don't really like to look up long synopsis and spoil the book for myself before I read it, but I've heard this book is fantastic. It's one of those that has so many five-star reviews from people that I trust and love and so I'm really hoping I will love it as well. This time of year I'm already thinking about my favorites for the end of the year and I'm definitely hoping that this one is going to be on that list. Next we have Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright and if you follow my channel you would have seen that their other book Lost Souls is one that I previously read and loved and became a favorite of this year and so whenever I find an author where I would like one of their books I naturally want to go back and read through all of their backlist hoping to find another favorite author with more favorite books and I'm hoping that'll be the case here. This one I understand follows a serial killer who sees their murdering as an art and then they meet another individual who takes their art too far which I don't quite understand that premise because murdering in itself is too far but I understand that the book gets even worse and I'm curious to see where that goes. I believe I know I have some guesses based off a few things but I'm going to try to just experience it for myself. I found the other book by this author to have fantastic writing, messed up storylines and done in a way that is thoughtful and artful and I'm really hoping that I get a similar experience here. A lot of people really love Lost Souls, but I see even more recommendations for Exquisite Corpse, which seems to be a lot of people's all-time favorite by this author. And again, I'm hoping this will be a favorite of the year. Next we have Perfume by Patrick Suskind, which is a translated classic work that follows a man who is born with incredible ability of smell. And so he goes around trying to collect and experience all the smells of the world and eventually becomes entranced by the perfumes of women and wants to forever capture their smell. And of course, the story goes in nefarious directions, I understand. This is one I'm really interested in picking up. I believe it's going to be a very dark literary work and it's the kind of book that I've actually had my radar for years. I've heard about it since I started googling most messed up books of all time and this book always shows up but I held off reading it because of the fact that years ago my tastes were much more leaning into genre fiction. I wanted something that was easy to fly through and didn't take itself too seriously. Now I'm more drawn to more literary fiction and so I'm hoping this one will scratch that itch. I really enjoy finding these older works that are surprisingly dark for their age and I'm hoping that this one will be again another favorite. I gotta stop saying that. I always just say that during these videos but it's the reason I make a TBR is to find new books to love. Next up is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami which is one of the books that I'm listing under dark fiction but I know isn't technically a horror thriller by any means. This is a piece of literary fiction that follows a young man who goes off to college. He becomes entranced with this young woman. Something happens and then he is dealing with the aftermath of those events and so this is one where I do know a little bit more about it but I'm purposely holding back. I think that it's going to be a darker story, hopefully a bit of an adult coming of age narrative. I think the author's writing is lovely. I previously read, as you know, 1Q84 by this author and really loved the book despite the weirdness in it. This one appears to be an even more accessible book, even more beloved and less controversial. So I'm certainly hoping to love this one as well. And given the premise, I looked at a few of their other books, I think this is the easiest one for me to fall in love with because I've read similar plots and narratives to this in terms of concept and really tend to enjoy them. So again, I think that this one has a really good chance for me to love it too. And finally for dark fiction, I want to sneak into historical books. The first one being The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which is again a little bit off brand. It's definitely not strictly horror, but it is a dark book given the fact that it is set around World War II and the story is narrated 
by the character of death. It's one that was incredibly buzzy and popular when it first came out, and for whatever reason, I just never read it. I wasn't reading a lot of historical fiction at that time, but World War II tends to be one of the time periods that I'm perhaps most interested in when it comes to period pieces, so I'm hoping I will really enjoy this one. Again, I'm probably the last person online who has read it. Let me know what you thought of it, what you think I'm going to think of it, and if you haven't read it yet, let me know that I'm not completely alone as the last person online to have not read The Book Thief. And last is another historical dark fiction, and that is The Devil of Nanking by Mo Hader, which is a historical retelling of the horrific massacre of Nanking. I generally know the events of it only in the broad strokes, but I've never really dived into the situation itself in a lot of detail. I have read one fantasy book that is a retelling of those events, and it is horrific, and I also love that book, despite the fact, or perhaps because of the fact, that it is so brutal in nature. So it's one that, again, I've been aware of for a long time, and I held off reading because I was never in the mood for something that dark and disturbing, but I find myself being drawn to more of these type of books recently, and I think I'm in the right mental space to take it on. It's not going to be an easy read. It's not going to be a fun read, but I'm really ready for that. I want to learn more about the case through the lens of this historical piece and really see what it is all about. I know it's going to be a tough read. Next, let's switch it up and talk about science fiction. The first one I want to read is Cold Welcome by Elizabeth Moon. I will be fully honest, this book is on the list because of the fact that I understand that it involves the main character going back to their home planet, which is supposed to be cold and icy, and I'm always looking for books in science fiction fantasy that have that wintry setting. I believe this is a companion series, so I really should go back and read more of the original series following this same character. So I will do that and then continue on to this series if I like it and hopefully again get those good wintry feels there. Next, I think a lot of you will be excited to see that I'm going to be reading Revelation Space by Alistair Reynolds. I've actually read several books by this author before, but for whatever reason, I keep reading the books that are around this series rather than their most popular and most beloved trilogy here. This one I understand follows humanity as they are going to colonize this one planet. You find out that there are aliens that lived there previously and have since died out or were killed off, and so there is a scientist or a group of scientists that are looking to figure out what happened all those years ago. And I believe the idea is the question of who killed the aliens that are now gone and are they coming back to finish what they started. And so it's a premise and plot that I've seen in other places, but it is one that I honestly probably never get tired of, and so I'm very excited for this one. It's classic space opera. And in the science fiction I've read by Alistair Reynolds, I always say that his best attribute is his world building, which I think will really shine in a book like this. And so I'm expecting this one to be fast and exciting. I want to know how it all is going to fall out. And very much I'm excited because, again, I've read other books by them that I liked but didn't necessarily love. And I really feel like I should have started with their best work and started to get that best impression. And everyone, you might disagree and let me know in the comments, but everyone I talk to says that this is the best of Alistair Reynolds and I want to see what that looks like. Next is a book called New Moon by Ian McDonald, which is the first in the series. If I like the first book, I definitely will continue on to the rest. In this one, it is set on the moon, and we follow these corporations that I believe are known as the Dragon that control the business and trade of the space. And so we follow as they're dealing with, I believe, family feuds and trying to control trade and all of that. I don't know a lot about it. It's, again, just one that I see as really popular, really beloved among people who are reading it. And so it's just one that has been on my TBR for way too long, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what it's all about. Next, we have Adeniman and The Rise of Deniman by Dan Simmons. I have tried this take so many times, I'm not sure if I'm saying the titles right, so I'm sure you all will kindly correct me in the comments there. I read the first two books in this quartet, which I understand are kind of meant to be read as two duologies, and I like them, but I didn't necessarily love them as much as I hoped I would, but I do own all of the books, so I really do want to finish up and continue on with the series. It is such a beloved science fiction classic. It's just, well, classic, I know it's more modern, but relatively, it is just considered to be one of the best modern books that has come out in the genre by so many people. I see it all over other people's favorite series lists, and I want to give it another try. I want to continue on and see if the remaining part of the series works a little bit better than the first part, which again, it didn't work poorly for me. I just didn't entirely love it as much as everyone else did, which is a disappointment when I hope, of course, a book will be a favorite of mine, or a series in this case. And finally, we have The Stars, My Destination by Alfred Bester, and this is a classic science fiction story. Again, I don't know too much about 
about. I've heard it compared to The Count of Monte Cristo, which is one of my favorite classics. I recently read it, really enjoyed that story of revenge. And so if this book has any of the similar plots or themes or anything around there, I am very much excited for this one. Again, it's one that I see on lots of favorite lists. It's considered to be one of the best classics that everyone should read by a lot of people that I really respect. And so I just need to read it. I need to know what it's all about. Obviously hoping it will be a favorite, but I also think it's really important as a science fiction reader who is going through all of the more modern books to make sure that I'm also reading again more of the classics and really understanding the foundations of this genre. So that is something I want to do starting of course with this book. Now moving on to fantasy, we have The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence, which is the first book in the start of a new fantasy series. I've read other books by this author like Red Sister and Prince of Thorns and generally really enjoyed them. I'll be honest, the reason that this book or this series is on the list is the fact that it is set in a cold, wintry climate and just like with Cold Welcome, I'm just looking for books with those wintry feels and so I'm hoping that I will enjoy the story but I'm really here for the setting first. The next is a doozy and that is The Dragonbone Chair and its sequels all by Tad Williams. This is the iconic epic fantasy classic story that is supposedly the loose inspiration for A Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. He really talks about that being his inspiration and so I understand that the inspiration is loose and this is far more classic than the grim dark that I know through that beloved series but I'm still interested to see if there are any threads of comparisons, things that I love in Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire series that I will see in the original inspirational work. And again, it's just such a classic to the genre that I want to check it out for myself. I've read this author's work in terms of science fiction before and I'm looking to see their fantasy, which is arguably considered to be their first and foremost best genre that they write in. So hoping I love this one. A little bit intimidated. I will be fully honest that this one might be too classic for my personal taste, but again, I still think it's important for me to read it and experience it for myself and see where the foundations of these modern fantasy classics are coming from. Next is Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Sikoski and with this author I want to read more of their fantasy because I've actually read a lot more of their science fiction and I believe this one is a flintlock fantasy story so a fantasy story involving guns given the title and I haven't read a lot of that type of genre but I really want to see if it's a subgenre that appeals to me. It sounds like something on paper that sounds up my alley. I've enjoyed this author's work before. I think they do some really creative world building on the sci-fi side of things so I'm curious to see how that will translate over to the fantasy. Is it going to be the kind of fantasy I like? I've seen some major fantasy channels talking about this one, but for the most part I don't see it to be as beloved or as well known, so I'm always interested in reading an author's lesser known work to see if it deserves more hype than it's getting. Next we have Acacia by David Anthony Durham, and this is an epic fantasy story that follows a leader who is currently ruling over their empire. Their empire has been at peace and in the same position for quite a while. However, something happens. There's an attempt on this emperor and the story goes from there as there is instability that is introduced. I've heard this book loosely, very loosely compared to something like A Song of Ice and Fire where it has a story that is very epic in nature with different characters vying for control of the nation and that is honestly one of my favorite parts of A Song of Ice and Fire. So I'm hoping that even if it's incredibly loose and goes in a completely different direction with different characters and plotting and all of that, I'm hoping that it will scratch that similar itch. I really enjoy that power struggle, that political unease, and I'm hoping that this book will get that. It's one that I don't hear talked about a lot, and I hope that that is just simply that's a hidden gem, but I want to check it out for myself. It's been on my radar for years, and again, it's about time I got to it because it's just been sitting on my TBR, burning a hole, and I really want to change that. And last, we have The Forgetting Moon by Brian Durfee, which is the first book in epic fantasy series by a fellow booktuber. It's one that I've heard fantastic things about where it is a story that is very classic in terms of the fancy tropes but doing those tropes very well. I understand the general premise involves around a lot of prophecies that are being told and watching as they are potentially fulfilled. I again don't know, want to know too much about it. I really just want to experience it for myself. This book is really long which again is perfect for the winter months when I tend to have more reading time, more indoor time during the storming weekends. And so I'm really hoping it's a book I can just fall into. I believe there is more published already, so if I like this one, I can continue on. And I'm always happy to support another fellow author, assuming that I enjoy their work, because I know as an individual, I think Brian Durfee comes across as a really stand-up guy on the internet. And if I like his books, even better. And editing Rachel popping back in because I haven't talked yet about my patron picks for the quarter. And so I do have a patron. I try not to mention it too often. Link down below if you do want to 
join us and participate in the book club. Each month we read a book. And so for the month of November, our theme was Aliens for Science Fiction. And so we're doing Lagoon by Nnedi Okorafor. This is one that I understand is set near the city of Lagos in Nigeria. And I'm always looking for science fiction from different perspectives. I don't know a lot about this one, but I really love the Binti novella series. And so obviously I'm hoping I'm gonna love this one too. And I'm looking forward to getting into it because I feel like it's a little bit more underhyped of some of her work. And then for December, we have The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. And this is a book that has been recommended to me so many times by so many of you. I believe it's post-apocalyptic with giant monstrous plants. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. But the premise sounds fantastic. I've read several books by this author before over the years and really enjoyed them. So I have a strong feeling I'm going to like this one too. And it's about time I got to it. Next year in 2025, I really want to focus more on reading these kind of big buzzy classics that I haven't gotten to yet. So this is a good way to get a head start on that. And last one of my favorite patron perks is the ability to nominate one book for my seasonal TBR. This month, only one person participated. So they won a by automatic default, but I could not be happier. The book that was selected is, let me just check. I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. This is a book that has a really long title, hard to remember, but one, again, that has been recommended to me so many times by those of you that watch my channel. Actually, several of you have incorrectly attributed your reading to my supposed recommendation. A lot of you have thanked me for recommending this book because you love it so much. I have not read it yet. I think I know if it was perhaps Emily Fox who was recommending this book a while back, but I have heard great things about it. The basis synopsis I Know, which is possibly wrong, is that it follows a woman who is in this captive cage with 39 other women and they are held captive by men and they are again sheltered and don't really get to experience life outside of there and don't really understand the male experience or get to interact with the men in this world. And I don't know how far it's going to go down the dystopian rabbit hole. I believe it's fairly literary. It's short. I just have a really good feeling about this book. So many people have recommended it to me or again, assumed that I was the one who recommended it to them because they think it's such a me book. So I think I need to actually read the book that everyone thinks that I'm recommending because I have a really good feeling about this one, but I just got to actually go and read it. So absolutely. Thank you so much to the patron who recommended this book. I happily accepted the challenge and I will report back soon. So that's that's it for this video here. I'd love to know the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And I also really appreciate your feedback on my list. If you think I'm making a mistake with one of these books, if you think I should read a different book by the same author, let me know if I should swap something out. I really value your opinions and you really never lead me wrong. So I really appreciate any feedback and thoughts as you look through the books that I've picked out for the winter months. And of course, if you're new here, I hope you do stick around and subscribe. This is really representative of what I read, so horror, thriller, science fiction, fantasy, and other dark things. If you wanna help me out with this video, you know the drill. I appreciate a thumbs up, I appreciate a comment, or even just hitting that little notification bell. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.